Hey guys, good morning. Ken Smith, Ken Smith Fishing. I normally post the Rayburn Report on Tuesday morning. I'm going to post that on Wednesday or Thursday morning this week because I'm going to post this today. I got to sit down with uh, Brian Shook and Danny Isles after they caught their 49 pounds at Rayburn on Saturday and spent about 10 or 15 minutes visiting with them, so I thought you guys would be interested in this. Um, by the way, I apologize. The, uh, the audio is not awesome. I had a lot of ambient noise and there were obviously a lot of people around, but uh, I still got this captured. I think you'll enjoy it. And then I've also got right here a picture of the actual baits that they were throwing. Uh, so you have those two colors. And so hope you guys enjoy this. I mean, how much? Did we get saved by the middle? Yes, there's a lot of money in this for you coming up. Uh, so we almost won the uh, Texas Team Trail today, but I jumped off a 39-pounder, which is what we'd have had to call to catch you guys. You know, you're going to say I'm full of crap, but I caught one that was bigger than that a couple of weeks ago. Matter of fact, you were in the tournament when I caught it. Did it have whiskers? It did. It was big <laughs> All right, so let's first let's start out. What's the biggest stringer you've ever caught before today? Uh, the two of us had 30, 38, 93. So when you're driving down the road and you're like, we're going to whack them, I'm going to catch an eight, then I'm going to catch a seven, does 49 pounds ever come in your head? No. Absolutely not. No. No. I don't see how anybody can say it would. What's your biggest fish you ever caught? I also didn't weigh it. Uh, it was today? Well, weighed. I don't know. Yeah, the biggest one weighed. I caught one at Toledo that was about the same size, but I don't know that for sure. So this was probably, may have been your biggest fish ever today. Probably. So what's your biggest fish ever? 12 of four today. <laughs> you both may have caught your personal best today. I did some. In the tournament, too, is a crazy part. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to get lucky, let's just get straight up lucky, right? Yes. All right, so y'all are boat number 202. Yeah. Do you think somebody's... Oh. Actually, uh, honestly, I like a lake though, because that way we just run up the lake until we find somewhere nobody's at and we pull in there and fish. All right, so let's back up. Y'all caught a nine and an eight, right? The other day? Uh, the other day. Yeah, something like Two that. weeks ago? We didn't have a third fish until after two thirty. Right, but y'all wind up weighing 20 pounds in the outlaw tournament. Yeah. Same spot? No. So you run up the lake, you see one of your spots, nobody's on it. Pull up. How many cast? Thirty or so. Yeah. It's a good little while down yeah. the point. We fish probably thirty minutes. So for like that. guys who have no clue, including myself apparently, I'm guessing this is a main lake deal. Yeah. Still. And these and these fish are moving up. Uh, Clay. It's got a mixture of brush and hard stuff and crap. I mean, it's not just a random point out in the middle of the lake. Right, right. They all have something. They all either have wood or they have some kind of gravelly stuff or brush piles. They all have something, right? That's typically related to structure. There's something down there. So when you left here this morning, how many rods on the front deck? Oh, oh, I had a bunch of them. We were prepared for everything. I bet I brought nine or ten. Yeah, we had way more than normal. Usually we had four or five. We had probably fifteen. I had four crankbaits tied on. I had um, C15, uh, C20, uh, six inch crankbait. Um, I had, he had, how many crankbaits we have on? Four, something like that. And we were planning on running out early to see if there's any fish, you know, with the cold weather, maybe still hanging around offshore, and then we were prepared to zip it and hightail it to the bushes and grass, whatever we could find. It, for the, those of you who don't know, the water's been rising on Rayburn all week. Uh, main lake water's probably 56, 57 degrees in some places it's now. It's a little bit colder than that, but was my it? temperature might be wrong. I don't we know. We saw 53 yeah. this morning. Okay, so that's what you started. Yeah, it was that takeoff. And this we morning. were actually thinking it would be a little colder than that because Toledo was 50 last weekend. Did y'all catch with Toledo? No. <laughs> uh, we missed a check by about a pound and a quarter. Uh, so, hey, look what's that? Hey, Stephen, did you ever fish this spot that they caught these fish on? <laughs> I don't have a clue where they're at. <laughs> <laughs> That's called a photo bomb. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what lake they were on. Uh, they weren't on the same lake I was on. They said they made a long run to Falcon. Yeah. All right, so uh, you started out, you said 30 or 40 casts. What's the first fish? Uh, well, that's the funny thing. We usually underestimate everyone we catch. First one we caught this you morning. You don't knock an Elium? 
No, we try not to. But, Too many people. Uh, everywhere. So the first one we catch, we get it netted, we drop it in the bottom of the boat, in the net, and we're looking at it, and we both go, that's a 10 pounder. Like, uh, and we always underestimate. We it. always say that's a 6, 7, and we weigh it up here, and it's like an 8. We said, that dude's a 10. I said, yeah, that might be your best, your biggest fish you've ever caught. I really thought so. And I got it, he's back up there fishing. Like, this is a big one. Wait, you're messing with his fish? Oh, yeah, I netted it. Oh, yeah. I'm kind of I'm sort of saying. greedy, so Somewhere. usually I like casting again, trying to catch another one while he's, he's down rod. back here, inconvenient. <laughs> yep. uh, but it, it switched around because eventually he got me back here in the net, and then he started catching some. So how long before y'all had five? Or was this your five? No, this was our five. We caught six fish. We caught one uh, Kentucky that wasn't even a keeper, and then those five big ones. Before 10 o'clock, we had run about three spots. We had two fish here two fish there, two fish here, with one being the short fish. And I think we caught the Kentucky at the second spot, so we caught one big one in a Kentucky at the second one. Oh, so these weren't all off the same spot? No. How many spots? Three. Okay. Three spots. We actually okay. caught the big ones. And you've told me before, y'all have seven to twelve spots that you kind of rotate January, February? Or more, depending on like levels and stuff, right? We've been doing a pretty good job of finding new stuff. Uh, we've got probably as many waypoints offshore over here is anybody I would guess and we've been working in more stuff than we used to fish because there's so many people fishing there's so much pressure you can't just go to the same old same old every time we keep having to look find new stuff are you looking so are you finding stuff with your electronics or are you finding stuff fishing Some did you see these fish today before you caught them? No, we didn't see them before we started fishing. Yeah, well, we both had to work Friday and uh, didn't get to practice. Oh, so you did this with, what would y'all caught if you practiced? Probably nothing. Probably you would have caught one of these probably, probably if you'd practice. Six pounds. Yeah. So we would have got screwed up and been throwing a chatterbait or something all day. Thanks. That's, I was, you guys will see I threw a chatterbait all day. That was just a mean shot at me right there. Sorry. <laughs> so we caught the crap out of these not nine and ten pounds. So, by the way, so uh, you said you had a couple of uh, cloud crankbaits on your deck. Semi partly cloudy day today. What's your favorite colors down here? So we we don't throw a whole lot of different colors. We'll throw the chartreuse and blue and we'll throw like a shad pattern. Um, and that's really about it. We don't, don't have any kind of crazy color. We did buy a couple red crankbaits to try. And we didn't even try them, but typically we've got, we both probably have the same tackle. We've got the chartreuse blue some shade of uh, shad. Our water never really gets clear enough to monkey around with it, so if you throw a sexy shad and a chartreuse crankbait, it doesn't matter if it's blue, black, or brown. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Now, if we fished Almostead or somewhere, it's gin clear, then you got to kind of change up and do some other stuff. But we've never noticed a problem here. When y'all are doing this deep, deep cranking, are y'all downsizing your line? No, not with those big baits. Uh, I mean, smaller than that. you, you got to have... I would say minimum 15. I use 16. I don't know what you use. 20. You crank with 20. Yeah. Even, no, even that's your 15 I've, crankbait? No, I use 12. I use 16. 12. <laughs> I'm too scared to lose the big ones. It's not worth it to me. But, yeah. You know, rod's a big deal. We've got, we've got the right yeah. rod. Hopefully, we don't lose a fish. We change all of our hooks. It's going to do everything by the book. So do you throw the triple grip hook or do you throw a round bend hook on your crank bait? No. It depends on the bait. We kind of alternate in the time of year. Which so, point? Uh, is this for you or is this for these guys? For these guys. Look down the edge. Yeah. Uh, okay, we're done. For you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm asking. That's why that guy didn't ask this question, and I'm asking these questions. I want to know. The, the biggest thing is uh, the size of the bait. On the smaller baits, you want the triple grips because they tend to hook and hold better. On the bigger baits, you can go to the round ends because you can use a thicker, stronger hook. So it's basically like using a jig or a worm, mm -hmm. and that's what the bigger lines for too. When you hook one, you can crank them to the boat and not worry about it. That's our theory, right or wrong. <laughs> You know, today you were right. Today you very pretty lucky. much got it right today. And we were very, very fortunate because we hooked five of those big ones and got all five of them to the boat. And thankfully, they all hooked pretty good. We have one only at the back foot, but we still got it. Mm -hmm. So, main lake, main lake points, depth of these fish seem to be in? Uh, they're, so they're still deep. 
Yeah, they, well, they're still deep, but I don't think they were there last weekend because last weekend when I practiced, I had caught one keeper, I think, on Sunday. And the only thing we were thinking is, wait, we got a cold front, maybe the fish will back up a little bit. Because uh, so you got to think they're coming with this move. Well, you got different, different um, phases of the, of the spawn coming up. Probably some may have already left. You got more coming. We're hoping with the weather that you'd have a few still coming. So we just got lucky that they we hit it right. There is obviously another wave of them, or maybe the first wave. You know, maybe just the bucks are up there. You said you caught a lot of fish today with no size. We caught three pounder. So maybe uh, maybe you're just starting to see these fish really stage up. That Anthony Sharp, I believe, he had 40 last yeah. weekend. So what did he have today? Did you see? He did not. I don't like know. A few good fish there. I saw four of my live ones. And by the way, have you ever caught 30 and not won a tournament? Unfortunately, yes. yes. Okay, so for the guy that you did that to today, you don't feel so bad about beating him when he had 30 and y'all beat him. Absolutely not. All right, what else can you tell, tell us? Tell what else you would want to tell us that you don't want to tell us about these fish? How many of them are on crankbait? Oh, all five of them are on crankbait, uh, and thankfully they were all healthy and released alive. So that was the biggest thing. We've been taking care of them all day, rejuvenated, water, kept them upright. And, uh, Did you fizz them? We did not. Yeah. I'm, I'm scared to fizz them because every one I've ever tried to do it on, I've killed. So we just try to keep them alive, keep the water cold, and let the release guys do their job because they know what they're doing. I obviously do not. Yeah. yeah I'm scared to do the same. You know, you do it with the colder water, we don't put yeah. up too concerned. You've all lived and let the professionals do it. You might have could have caught 50 to fish all day. We'll never know. Yeah, we'll never know. <laughs> do you think you beat this this sack? Do I think we can? Do you think you will? Well, if we go to El Salto, maybe. I don't uh, think so. I mean, that's a, that's a, you can't nobody even it, thinks right? about it. I mean, 40 pounds last weekend sounded stupid to me. We've been talking about it all week. It's wild. It's, it's a huge sack. So and you know, of, it's fished tougher this year. There's no doubt. I mean, yeah. I threw away a 10 and a half pound check the other day in a Bay of Falcon. Yeah. I thought there's no way you could check. <laughs> it's been very, they're not everywhere. Yeah. It's not good, Ken. But I mean, <laughs> nobody gets paid with 10 and a half pounds on Raymond, so I threw them back. Yeah. Today, I think it said it's about 14 and a half to get paid today. Really? Which is, that is kind of low. Still low. Yeah. 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 And it, it's not easy to go catch a limit. Yeah. I mean, and that's what I look at it is, or at least it doesn't seem to be, if you're not going to catch a whole lot to start with, you might as well go try to catch big ones. Well, yeah. to me, that's what you guys do that I can't do. You guys, and I, I look back when Jonathan Gear used to win all the bass champs, the guys who really will commit to going out there, you're not going to catch 20 fish. No. You might catch, you might not catch it. Well, that's a, zero or zero. Yeah. That's the other thing. We're perfectly fine with not catching anything, and that shows because we usually end up towards the top or towards the very bottom. Right. We almost never end up with an average 14, 15 pound set. Yeah. We had a wacky worm tied on the first time in a long time, though. We were ready. <laughs> that actually makes me feel yeah. better. That they, yeah. might, they knew they might yeah. not catch them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we literally had probably 14, 15 rods out. We had stuff rigged up to fish from about six inches of water out to as deep as you want to throw it. <laughs> so why do y'all throw a crankbait versus a rig, Carolina rig, or an A rig, or a football jig? Uh, we had all that tied on, too. Yeah. But we do. We just lucked out. Yeah. Caught these first fish, the first couple of fish would pull up all these points and, uh, and just went on by business. Obviously, they were biting great nice today. Tomorrow, maybe a football gig. We had everything tied on as everybody else would. Some days we catch them on a camera. So those fish are that deep. So you said you had a C10, a C15 tied on. 15, 20. Oh, so 20. So are you you trying to reach those fish with a 20? Yeah. How deep do you think you can get a 20 to run on 15, 20 pound line? I honestly think on his crankbaits, I can get a 20 to run. Three 20 with a C. Some of his older crankbaits, I don't think he could. How long a rod do you throw it on? It's a 20 pounds, 7 11 power tackle. Never run really big as a cowboy for us for getting fish. It's got the right action. It's got the right action. All right, well, y'all were fishing a different derby than I was. All right, so let's real quick. Has Steven ever fished either one of these spots? Uh, 
I would have, he's fished here for 30 oh, years. Oh, so that's probably, awesome. Probably. I love it that he might have fished these spots. <laughs> uh, yeah, All right. I really don't know. Uh, he wasn't there when we got there. <laughs> On these spots, I don't know where we did goes. have a better boat number, but I don't think that matters. Yeah. Who uh, who gets the money? You're not married, are you? I am not. Does that mean I get more? We split everything down the middle. I'm talking about it. You're married, aren't you? Yeah. When he gets home, does she say, "Hey, come on"? You need it. He look how much fun he had. He should just let you have the money. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Good job, man. Thank you. That's crazy stuff. Yeah. I called up with Clint and Stacy. She didn't have any makeup on. She said Clint doesn't either. But so, what'd you have today? Twenty-four eighty-three. Eighty-two. What, what did what did Stacy catch today? She had a seven point eight. Was that big bass in y'all's boat? No, it wasn't. For uh, once, for once, I had a I had a nine point uh, eight, almost a freaking ten pounder, to get us to twenty-four. Mm -hmm. Thought we had a chance to do really well today, and. So if you'd have called the two-pounder, what size fish would you have called it to win this tournament? We did some math a while ago, and again, we had 24.83. If we would have called my 1.76, which I think was my fish. You had a 1.76? It was mine. It was mine. Oh, it was yours. <laughs> it would have taken a 26 and a half pounder to call that little one. Did you have that fish on? Oh, I think I did. He wrapped me up. Uh -huh. and no, I mean, that's the one where it just came undone. Remember? Is that what it was? Yeah. I think it was a 26. You know, but a 15 got caught this week, so 26 is definitely a play. Oh, it was out. I had him on. I had him on to win the tournament. I was one. Rooster tail? One. Don't tell my secrets. Rooster tail in Carolina, Rick. Yeah. Small for problem.